Is a quartz crystal. The shape is characteristic to a class of crystals called monoclinic. The amethyst is actually quartz. I mean crystalline silicon dioxide with some chrome or iron impurities that gives the characteristic purple color. The pyrite, alias fool's gold, is iron sulfide and obviously have a cubic structure. Selenite is uh, crystalline gips gypsum. Mica is monoclinic. It cleaves easily parallel with the base of the crystal. It is a good electrical insula insulator and stands high temperature. Celestite is orthorhombic and it's used to extract the exotic element strontium. Some crystalline minerals are so colorful, beautiful and rare that they are precious. People display them as art objects or cut and polish them uh, to make jewelry. Here is a large cluster of quartz crystal, obviously too nice to be pulverized and transformed into silica or reduced to metallurgical silicon. The amethyst cluster here has an intense color and very well formed glossy crystals. The cut and polish jaws here were formed by filling a gas bubble cavity in volcanic rocks with minerals deposited from uh, hydrothermal fluids. People learn to change the color of some crystals by annealing. The citrine in the picture used to be amethyst before being heated at relatively high temperature. The cluster of dark crystal embedded in its matrix show now, I forgot the name of both minerals, is set on a hematite base containing orthoceros remains and it's a beautiful presentation. The composition featuring selenite, druzia and celestite crystals fooled me for a while. I thought it is a natural formation. It is not. The crystals were arranged as they are to enhance their beauty. Finally, the eagle here is carved from rose quartz with uh, an agate bake, quartz cluster base and other minerals as plumage. Crystals are colorful minerals are cut, polished and set as jewelry. This is the second largest use of minerals after producing laboratory and industrial chemicals. No need to illustrate, illustrate on the topic. However, he is an extra large Tanzanian am amethyst uh, of superb brilliancy, although developed a crap right in the middle. The gem quality crystal are rare and very expensive. Scientists learn to make them in the laboratory. Ruby, emerald, sapphire can be grown from melt from and from flux. Many other techniques were perfected for specific application. Cry crystals are, some crystals are piezoelectric. They produce electric sparks when are mechanically shocked. Or inverse, they change dimension when exposed to electrical fields. On the screen you can see now a synthetic quartz crystal grown by hydrothermal method. Nothing is more amazing than the crystalline semiconductor material which enable human humanity to embark on the technology world we are these days. Our museum is powered by a homemade solar system made with crystalline silicon solar cells. The cells are made from wafers cut from a very large single crystal ingot, bullet, grown in laboratory by Chokralski method. Those wafers are processed to absorb photons and convert light into electricity. But solar cells are one of the simplest semiconductor devices. 
molecular beam epitaxy, ion milling, chemical vapor transport, metallo-organic precursor are used today to make light emitting diode, semiconductor lasers, quantum wells, and many other devices that makes me wonder, once in a while, aren't we the humans, the gods of this universe? <music>